Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Daily Word. It's Tuesday, November 24th. Of course, we're in the middle of Thanksgiving week and reminded every day by people who respond to me and reach out to me that we have much to be thankful for, even in the midst of, well, we've, well the, the times we're living in have been given lots of names. Um, today, in a message I got from someone in a text conversation, the word ridiculousness was used. Can't argue with that. Um, we, uh, we could we could coin lots of terms to determine and talk about the times we're living in. Um, so, because of that, it's I think it's good that we gather every day just for these few minutes. Um, some of you watch live. Some of you go back and watch it later. Um, I think it's good that we at least gather and hear a little bit of hope for our lives and a little bit of way that God's working in the midst of our lives. Um, I haven't always been responding the last couple of days. Usually I come back and say good morning to you all. I haven't done that. Um, I've been having to get up early so Diane can help me because she's back to a normal work schedule. And so usually by the time I'm done here, um, because of my low energy level, uh, I have a hard time um, coming back and responding. But hopefully today, I can begin to do better job with that. I'm going to light my candle this morning. This renewed hope daily of the presence of the Holy Spirit with us as our guide and comfort and guardian. So I hope you light your candle and breathe deeply into the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life this day. The scripture that I've chosen this morning um, it's an interesting story. It's the call of the first disciples. Um, and so, just, just hear these words from Luke 5, verses um, 1 through 7. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats, left there by the fishermen, who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners into the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. I was thinking about this text today, and, and you probably know me well enough to know that oftentimes when I think about text or think about what it is that we're going to do together, more often than not, a hymn will come to me. And I got to thinking this morning about this particular scripture. And the hymn, I don't know if I would classify it as a Sunday school hymn or not. But the hymn that strikes me about this particular text is, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus. Tell me the stories of Jesus I love to hear. Things I would ask him to tell me if he were here. Scenes by the wayside, tales of the sea. Stories of Jesus, tell them to me. Sorry for my bad singing. Um, can you imagine, here we have this, this text as Luke tells it. And Jesus is standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and the people were crowding around him, and they were listening to what he had to say. And, you know, there were the fishermen, Peter, James, John, they were all those fishermen who, who had worked all night, who had fished and hadn't caught much at all, if anything, and they were there listening, and imagine being on the fringes of that conversation. And, and the crowd apparently was so large that Jesus climbed into one of the boats, a, po a boat, of course, belonging to Simon, 
go out a little bit from the shore, and then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. I think about that story and how how fascinating that must have been. And I don't know about you, but do you ever wonder what Jesus taught them, what he sat down and had to say to them about, about the kingdom of God, about what they would encounter, about who he was? And, you know, people obviously had heard about him, so they gathered around. And so the disciples-to-be are standing on the side, and they're listening to Jesus do this teaching for those who are there. And the disciples have been listening to what he had to say. They've been hearing the truth that he had to talk about. They've heard who he was. I can only imagine that this must be, must have been an amazing place to be. And, you know, this the hymn just rings out to me, tell me the stories of Jesus, because it would be interesting if we could hear those stories in a new and fresh way. The story is important because not only do the people get to hear Jesus teach, and he puts out, but then he has Simon go out then into deep water and put his nets back down into the water, even after Simon's objections, because Simon said, look, Master, we've fished hard all night, and we haven't caught anything, but because you say so, all right, I will do that. And they caught so many fish that their nests began to break and their boats began to sink. Now, it's interesting to me that that's how this really works in life, that we listen on Sunday morning or Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday at 10 o'clock, Christmas Eve, whatever it is, we we sit and we listen to some teaching. We we hear God's word spoke to us. We we join our voices in song. And those, to me, um, are those high mountaintop experiences, you know, where, where it's just fraught with teaching and learning and amazement. I often wonder sometimes um, if the disciples' jaws have just dropped to the ground when they hear Jesus teaching them. I, I often wonder about that. But, that. but then Jesus reminds Simon that, There's work to do. So the teaching ends, and they're called back to work. From the mountaintop experience, back to work to catch fish. You know, I think it's a reminder for us that we are not simply consumers of God's love, but we're participants in it. If we obsess over the mountaintop experiences, we lose sight of what God is calling us into. If we refuse to cast our nets and serve each other, we shrink away from our calling and waste the experience then of the mountaintops. We're called to serve each other. Mountaintops aren't the finish line, you know. They are catalysts along the journey of life together. And I think a lot about that in hearing these stories. And and I finished today all of my bulletins, um, sending them to the worship leaders for the month of, of December, and thinking about all that that means and what it is that God's calling us to. And, you know, we're going to have these great worship experiences, even though they're going to be online. And you have in your midst your Advent wreaths and all the bulletins and that you can really engage in this. And in the midst of that, we're still going to ask people to fill Advent boxes full of food so we can serve our community. We're going to ask folks to take boxes and and make a diligent effort to, to help someone around our neighborhood and our community in need. You see, we're not just about worship and these candles that dispel the darkness, but we're about then mission too. And so it's what Jesus called the disciples to that day, teaching and learning and then casting the nets, teaching and learning and then casting the nets. And I hope that's what we can be about um, in this season of Advent, in the days to come. It's really what Thanksgiving calls us to, to remind 
ourselves of what we ought to really be thankful for. And then, you know, have the courage to cast our nets and to share what we have with others. So maybe for you, um, like me, this scripture brings about that song. The wonder of hearing the teaching, the awesomeness of, of Jesus' presence in their lives, and then, you know, the call to cast the nets. So I pray you'll take that to heart today as we live our lives. Um, thank you for joining me. I pray you'll know peace today. I pray you'll know God's love today. I pray you'll know peace in the midst of the rain that is seemingly coming. I pray you'll know of God's grace and mercy and love in your lives and of my love for all of you. Have a great day, and I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock.